Oh, take your Bible, if you will, and turn with me to the book of James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Uh, promises. Oh, exceeding great. They're better than great. Uh, exceeding great and precious promises. And uh, we looked at those promises yesterday, uh, last week. We're going to look at a promise in the Bible that I need. Probably a promise in the Bible that you need, and maybe you don't know you need it, but by the end of the message this evening, you'll probably nod your head and say, oh, praise God for that verse in the Bible right there in James chapter 4, and uh, the devil. We're going to talk about the devil tonight, and uh, there's a story about a Yankee player. He was a relief player for the Yankees, and his name was Joe Page, and he dreamed one night that he went to heaven. And in heaven, he was assigned the task of forming a baseball team of all the great stars available there. And uh, he began to ask, but who are we going to play against? And uh, just then, the the devil phone called him or phoned him from hell and uh, began to challenge. He said, we're going to play a best of seven series. Whoever wins four is the the champ. And uh, the devil suggested no miracles on either side. And Paige began to scoff. He began to say, what chance have you got? Every great ball player goes to heaven when he dies. And the devil responded, he said, I'm not worried. I've got all the umpires. <laughs> praise the Lord. I was going to change that a little bit, but praise the Lord. James chapter 4, let's stand for the reading of God's word. We're going to read just uh, three verses, verses 6, 7, and 8. We'll read these three verses in unison, starting in verse 6. Ready? But he giveth more grace... Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Verse number seven is one of the promises, one of those exceeding great and precious promises Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. There is a battle going on in the world today. Uh, There is God, amen, but there also is a devil. He's a roaring lion uh, who walks about seeking whom he may devour. Uh, From the Garden of Eden to the present day, the Satan has been on the prowl. And he's on the prowl against you. He's on the prowl against me. And sometimes he begins to chisel away at you and he begins to chisel away at me. And this promise, this is a promise, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. It's been a good evening. Thank you for the music, that offertory about how great you are, Lord. And Lord, thank you for the choir special, Lord, the Uh, just the fellowship we have, but Lord, thank you for this precious time when we can look at your precious promises, Lord, and please bless and help us in Jesus' name, amen. Oh, the old smutty-faced devil. Uh, The devil has his beatitudes. Blessed are they who are bored with the minister's mannerisms and mistakes, for they shall get nothing out of the sermon. Blessed are they who are not interested in the affairs of church, for, the, the, for, the, uh, for they cause the world to say the, wor- the church is failing. Blessed are they who gossip, for they cause strife and division, which pleases me very, very much. Blessed are they who are easily offended, for they shall soon get angry and quit. Uh, blessed are uh, he who has no time to pray, for he shall, be, uh, he shall f- uh, fall very easily. And Satan's beatitudes. And in truth, many people struggle with a battle with the devil. And we think about it, and I'll name a couple names, but it's sad. In the world today, George Foreman, his daughter, 42 years of age, just killed herself this week. Did you hear about that? And so sad. Uh, A lady named Kelly Catlin, uh, or Caitlin, she was uh, an Olympic silver gold medalist just a couple years ago, just 23 years of age. Uh, This week, she killed herself. Uh, Not to mention this name, but a famous singer, Justin Bieber, Biber, whatever his name is, he has this huge thing, I'm going through a most difficult time right now. Now, those are people in the world going through difficulties. Uh, The devil is on the prowl, but he's also on the prowl for Christians, people love the Lord. Just this week, I had a friend from the past, he called me, 
And at first I didn't know who it was, but man, he was bawling and in tears. And uh, he was emotional. His life is falling apart. He doesn't know what to do. He didn't expect his life to turn out this way. way. And I prayed with him. I tried to encourage him. But he's doing battle with the devil. Uh, sometimes it's with people. And sometimes it's with sin of our past. Sometimes uh, people are doing battle because they have a problem with sin currently. Uh, past sin, the regret of sin, the scars of sin, re the regret. And uh, the battle with the devil is real. There's a, an artist from the last century he tried to paint a picture of our battle with the devil, and he painted it as a chess game. And the player was a young man and Satan. The young man was uh, manipulating the white pieces, and Satan had the black pieces. The issue of the game was this. Should the young man win, he would be forever free from the power of the devil. But if he lost, he would be the devil's slave forever. And the artist evidently believed in the supreme power of evil, for the picture presented the devil as a victor. In other words, the devil won. And at the very end of it, it showed the man's uh, hand hovering over his rook. And he was, he was just, uh, you know, the expression of it, he was paled over with amazement. And it was a, a look of no hope he had lost to the devil. By the way, that's fiction. We understand that. But, but people struggle in a battle with the devil, you might say. Now, how do you know that? Well, it started a long time ago in the Garden of Eden. And if you were to go back to Genesis chapter 3, don't turn there, but I'll, I'll talk about Adam and Eve. Uh, but Adam and Eve, the first man and the first woman, did battle with the devil. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, and Satan began to twist the word of God back in the very beginning and manipulate and trick man and uh, the Adam and Eve into sin. And sure enough, uh, sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. And they uh, committed the first sin, did they not? And since then, we found sin on the earth. Now, what about Job? Do you remember Job? Yes, sir. Hey, it's amazing when you read Job uh, chapter uh, number one, and you get to the point where uh, Satan comes to God and says, how about Job? And the very end, it's, it's really interesting because the Lord said unto Satan, and this is, this is Job chapter one, verse 12, the Lord said unto Satan, behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth, went forth from the presence of the Lord and began to, you might say, attack Job. And I put in my notes that God allowed it. That's pretty interesting. God allowed Satan to attack Job. And so we talk about this battle with the devil. It's been going on from the very beginning of time. Adam and Eve uh, began to happen with Job. Uh, what about Jesus? And I thought about Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. Uh, Jesus was led up in, uh, in, of the spirit in the wilderness and was tempted of the devil. And you remember that? Satan came and he began to, to say, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And Jesus responded in three instances, It is written. And, and I thought about this. You know, it's gone on through time, but Jesus... You know, these attacks were not just limited to the weak, but uh, God allowed Satan to even attack the Lord Jesus Christ. And we think about that. You may be a Christian, you may be strong in the Lord, but it doesn't, you're not immune from the attacks of the devil. Amen. Right. And we go on a little bit further. You go to the New Testament. What about the Apostle Paul? Uh, Paul endured Satan's attack in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18. It says, but Satan hindered us. And you think about uh, the Apostle Paul trying to plant churches, trying to win the, cause, uh, win the world with the for the cause of Christ. And there Satan is in the midst of it. God allows Satan to attack and Satan to even hinder the work of the great man, the Apostle Paul. You think about Adam and Eve, Job. We uh, look at the Lord Jesus Christ. We think of Paul. And Satan is attacking and attacking and attacking, and God allows it, yes, but the attacks are real. What about uh, Peter? Peter, one of the great men of the Bible, he's one of the disciples that walked with Jesus and talked with Jesus, and it tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, I, I've already quoted it, but it says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And we think about it. Peter knew about the attacks of the devil. And you could look see Peter looking back at sometimes with regret. How did that happen to me? 
How did I not watch and pray? How did I not see it coming? Jesus told me about this temptation, this struggle, this difficulty, and he fell into temptation. He denied the Lord Jesus three times, did he not? And we think about that. There's an old deacon uh, who used to pray every Wednesday night at a church. And at the prayer meeting, he'd always conclude uh, in the prayer, and he'd pray something like this. He said, and Lord, clean all the cobwebs out of my life. And, you know, you think about the cobwebs. He said, Lord, clean all the cobwebs. And every week he'd pray, Lord, clean out of the, all the cobwebs out of my life. And uh, eventually one man, he couldn't take any longer. He began to pray, Lord, clean all the cobwebs out of my life. And uh, the other guy said, no, Lord, Lord, don't do it. Kill the spider. <laughs> Kill the spider. And uh, you think about that, the cobwebs, a lot of these attacks are cobwebs, but we want to kill the spider. Amen. And we all have cobwebs, you might say, from the attacks of the devil. Sometimes you feel all alone, like you think it's only me and pastor never goes through any attacks of the devil. None of the apostles went through the attacks of the devil. None of the people in the Bible went on the attacks of the devil, but that's not true. The attacks of the devil were happening from the very, very beginning you look at good men like Job, you look at the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul, Peter, and if that could happen to them, it certainly can happen to you and I. Now, we go to this promise then. This is interesting, the promise. What are we to do when we're under the attack of Satan? By the way, there's a story, and uh, the, it's about the corpse men serving in Brazil. How many of you have ever been to Brazil? Anybody ever been to Brazil? Okay, Brazil, I think snakes. And I don't know if but uh, snakes, like big anaconda snakes. But the corpse men serving in Brazil, they were writing some instructions about what to do when you have an anaconda uh, going after you. And here's what it says in the, in the book. Remember not to run away. It's not an anaconda, I'm sorry, the python. Remember not to run away. I'd run. I don't care what the book says. I'm out of here. Amen. Remember not, not to run away. The python can go faster than you. The thing to do is to lie flat on the ground, on your back, with your feet together, arms at your side, head well down. The python will then try to push its head under you, experimenting at every possible point. Keep calm. Then it says, you must let him swallow your foot. It is quite painless, and it will take a long time. If you lose your head and struggle, he will quickly whip his coils around you. If you keep calm and still, he will go on swallowing. It just doesn't sound like a good book. <laughs> this, this is bad advice, okay, bad advice. But I'm reading anyways. Uh, keep calm and still, he will go on swallowing. Wait patiently until he has swallowed up to about your knee, then carefully take out your knife and insert it into the descended uh, side of his mouth with a quick rip, slit him up. And by the way, it's a good technique, but I'd never get to that point. <laughs> I, I would die of fright well before then, and it would be over, so I would just as soon run and get killed and then allow that to happen to me. But, but you think, uh, what are we to do with Satan? Are we allowed him let him swallow us up? Are we to let him to nudge on us a little bit? And the promise from God is right here in James 4, verse 7. Uh, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. There's two parts right there. Submit yourselves unto God. Uh, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You think about the, the promise is two part. First is submit yourselves, therefore, to God. And you, you want to have battle uh, victory over the attacks of the devil. Well, there's two parts. The first part is submission. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. In other words, th this is important. You want, I want to have victory over the devil. Amen. Okay, maybe, maybe this is just for me. But sometimes, I don't mean to admit it, but sometimes I struggle. I'm all alone, me and Jordan. I don't know if Jordan, you struggle or not. You just got an itch to your sleepy eye right there. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but uh, sometimes I struggle, okay, me and Randy, okay, that's anybody else struggle ever? Uh, okay, a couple of you, that's okay. I struggle sometimes, and I hate to admit that, uh, but I don't want Satan to uh, win the battle over me. I don't want to fall by the wayside as one of the stories where I fell into sin and I began to doubt God and not have faith. 
And the promise right here is, number one, submit yourself unto God. Submit yourself unto God. Make His mission your mission. In other words, what you want doesn't matter. What God wants does. When you submit it, it, you don't matter anymore. God does. It's not what I want. It's what God wants. It's not where I want to go. It's where God wants me to go. It's not what I want to do. It's what God wants me to do. It's not what church God, I want to be a part of. It's what, God, God, what church God wants me to be a part of. It's not what I want to do today. It's what God wants me to do today. It's not how I want to respond. It's what God wants, the way God wants me to respond. Uh, it's not, and we take my will out of it. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And we think of that. It's in the Lord, that's in the Lord's prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. But the first part of that, that promise is to submit yourselves unto God. It, forget yourself. What, what, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Lord, what do you want for me in my life? Uh, where do you want me to go today? What do you want me to say today? What do you want me to do with my life? And by the way, the, the, many people get attacked by the devil and get consumed by the devil because they are consumed with self. Amen. They're consumed with me, myself, and I. We're going to get to Isaiah. The well, first thing you do is, hey, it doesn't matter what I want anymore. It doesn't matter what I feel anyway. What matters is what God wants. And leg is a swing. And so he'll chase after me. I'll, I'll try to get away. I'll, like he'll look me out of the corner of my eye. He'll look like this. And he'll just be watching me. And then as soon as I start walking somewhere, he'll run up and he'll jump on my leg like this. And so I get him on my leg. And so then I, I swing him back and forth. I, get, I hold on and I... Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I really don't do that. Uh, but but he, he gets me and he holds on for dear life right there. And uh, sometimes I try to get away and man, he is quick and he'll hold on. Eventually he's holding on and I'm dragging him down the hallway like this. And uh, but but you think about it, the devil will grab hold of you and won't let go. And it's important for you to put up a fight. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. You know, put up a fight. Don't give up so easily. Put up. <laughs> you ever gone fishing? Yeah. Sometimes those fish put up too much of a fight and they get away and it makes me mad. I'd be like the devil. They're like me, you know. And uh, you, I'm not really the devil, but I was saying that the fish just doesn't normally give up very easily. They're fighting, trying to get off that hook. Then someone will get out of the water and flip and flop. And then you even get them on the shore for a while. You take them off. And they're flopping all over the place. And uh, I remember going fishing at Lake Prince in uh, Suffolk. And I was out on this small boat. And uh, they had these alligator gars. They were really skinny fish. And they were about this long. And they're swarming out there. And I threw in a plug and began to reel in the plug right there. And I got me a hold of an alligator gar. And there was a friend of mine in the boat. And the alligator gar has a mouth that, that size, about this big, full of teeth. <laughs> and so I got him in the boat. And as soon as I got him in, he was flopping all over the place. But he started just going. <laughs> and the guy I was with, it started gnawing on his leg. It's like. <laughs> and he, he about jumped out of the boat. I couldn't get that fish out of that boat quick enough. He was scared half to death. And uh, that fish was resisting. He's putting up a fight. In a lot of ways, we need to put up a fight on the devil. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God, but resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Resist. A couple of ways you can resist is go to, go, to, go to the Lord in prayer. Go to God in prayer. You, you start being, uh, going through a difficult time of temptation, a struggle, an attack on the devil. Uh, submit yourself to God, but immediately just stop and say, Lord... I have no power, but you do. And God, you promised me that I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Right now, that promise there in James chapter 4, submit yourselves therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Lord, I don't know how it's even possible right now. But Lord, I pray that you help me. And right there, you stop in prayer. You do battle with the devil with prayer. God's powerful. Amen? He's a powerful God. Powerful God. And I encourage you to go to the Lord in prayer. You know, sometimes that past sin, it'll gnaw on you and eat at you. It's sort of like a cancer on your brain right there. And it'll come back and it'll come back and it'll come back and it'll come back. And it's so persistent. Well, you can resist that. 
and go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, uh, forgive me for that past sin, but Lord, it keeps coming up. Help me with that. By the way, help me with that, Lord. And Lord can give you strength and power over that. Listen, the devil wants you to dwell on that past sin and say your life is worthless now, but that's not true. God's got a plan for you. Uh, just like the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. Boy, praise God for his mercy and his forgiveness. Amen. And then second of all, was uh, go, go to the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I know that's basic, but begin to cleanse your brain through the word of God. Begin to saturate your mind with the word of God. The word of God cleanses you. The word of God strengthens you. The word of God builds your faith. And when you read the Bible, wow, uh, you get done reading the Bible and studying the word of God. It helps you where you almost want to charge hell with squirt gun. In other words, you you're, you're feel like you can resist the devil. But you get a couple days without reading the Bible, a week, two weeks, a month, you begin to run from the word of God. And the devil is sitting back looking at you and he's laughing. Yeah, see, he's laughing like, look at you, you're... That was a long sermon, Pastor. You're supposed to be done by now, right now. <laughs> yes, sir. I got it. I'm going to move on right here. Uh, I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 14. We're going to be, be done right here. Pray and read your Bible. Pray and read your Bible. Pray and read your Bible. Isaiah 14 tells us about Satan. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, talking of Lucifer, I will ascend into heaven. Hey, he wasn't submitting to God, was he? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation of the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Then I like these last two parts. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Now, this is amazing. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that, it did, shake, that, did, it shake, that did shake kingdoms? It's coming a time, the very end, we're going to look at the devil and wonder why we allowed him to have such power over right. us. Come on. Right. Why did we let him to control us? Why did we let him to oppress us? And we weren't, we're not meant to live in oppressed a uh, life where the devil gains victory over us. And one day you'll look back and say, man, why didn't I just submit? Right. Why didn't I just resist? It's a promise of God. Is God a liar? Yes, sir. No. So if you submit yourselves, therefore, unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And let's say that verse together. Submit yourselves, therefore, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. One more time. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God, Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. It's been a good night. It's a great, precious promise, an exceeding uh, great and precious promise, Lord. Lord, I pray for maybe somebody here this evening who's been doing battle with the devil, Lord. The devil keeps coming up and knocking.